that and then uh, you'll get you'll get the feel as we lead into okay, the introduction sure. and we'll ask you a little bit about yourself mm-hmm. and then you know kind of go down the path of you know when were you diagnosed and tell us about that and how okay. and was it an emotional ride yes or no and um, you know, let you really keep in mind this, this is, this is your story really. So we're just trying to there, there to probe and ask some questions and, uh, but this is for you, right. It's for you and the community. So have fun with it. It's cool. Okay. And I'll let you, I'm trying not to get too, you know, rambly, you know, like I'll kind of, oh, don't worry. Elizabeth will cut you off in a heartbeat. So don't worry. She's good at that. So it's all good. And, and again, keep in mind, anything you say, and like Elizabeth and I do it all the time, we stumble, then we're like, okay, time out. And then that just gets removed from the recording. And we right, do it over of course, again. So, of course. you know, and then if you're like, ah, there's something else I want to say, we can add that in stuff like that. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Is your throat uh, clear, oh, Elizabeth? <clears> throat> it's all those cigarettes. No, I'm just kidding. I don't smoke. <laughs> Allergies. Yeah. <laughs> Step okay, Elizabeth, are we ready? Yep. All right, cool. All right. One, two, three. Oh, one more thing too, is you don't want to, I've done this before. I've moved like papers around and it really show. you can hear it on the podcast. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I'm going to try and be as chilled as possible. Yeah, I did like, I tap my foot and the, the producer was like, I can hear that sound. I'm like, no, oh, Jesus, yeah. right? I'm like, my gosh. I know it's so it's strict. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. you're in this field, so I'm in this yeah. field, and I have the most unideal studio in my home. So I, I <laughs> right. it it does it is what right. it is. Okay, yeah. one, two, three, four. Hello, everyone. This is Chris and Lizzo. We are a brother sister team. And on behalf of the Charco Marie Tooth Association, a.k.a. CMTA, we are coming at you. Coming at you from coast to coast. I live in California and Chris lives in Vermont. And guess what? This is another fantastic episode of our famous podcast name. What, Lizzo? CMT, the number four, me. And that's right, folks. CMT for me. And what is CMT for me, this podcast? It's a comprehensive podcast covering all aspects of CMT, the voice of individuals living with CMT, their challenges, and more importantly, their inspirational stories. What we want to do, let me just back up. Hold on, Mark. I want to say one more thing. We will also cover research updates, fundraising, interviews with the CMTA community, board members, branch leaders, CMTA leaders, and overall, an opportunity to spread awareness through the eyes of those with CMT. Well said, Chris. Before we dive into all this and to our next guest, I always need to catch up with you because I don't see I know. you very I know. often. I just, you're like jetting around. So it sounds like you've had a, a busy couple of weeks. Weren't you in Colorado skiing or something for a couple of days and then in New York City or yeah. Yeah. It has, it was cool though, you know, do a little spring skiing out in Colorado and it's always, I don't know what you think, but I think it's great to clear your mind, get outside, mm-hmm. enjoy the outdoors, you know, and then I took a trip to New York city. Um, never oh. spend much time in New York city and our daughter, Lila, who is a third year student at university of Virginia is going to be intern or have an internship in Manhattan. And we're running around trying to find apartments, right? Picture me coming from Vermont in New York city, riding the Metro, walking up and down the streets of Manhattan. But I'll tell you what, it did make me think at that time, think about all those with CMT. I was sitting there complaining about, oh my God, I got to walk three blocks. I got to go down these stairs. I got to get on the Metro. I got to walk off the Metro. What a pain in the neck. And then I was like, oh my God, I feel so embarrassed. Imagine if I had CMT, how would someone like navigate through that situation? Right? So it puts things in perspective. Hey, do you remember when, you know what, you know why you've never been to New York City? No. Because when we were little, mom used to say, if you go to New York City and get off that plane, you're going to get shot right away. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. You get killed. So I never went to New York City. Yeah. That's why they kept us in a glass bubble in Vermont. (laughs) So we finally smashed and got out of there. So what's going on with you, dude? (laughs) Well, I'm taking acting lessons in San Francisco. You are you serious? Yeah, uh-huh. Really? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you have no problem using your voice to project really loud sounds. I know, right? I, that's never been a problem for me, projection. But the problem with me is, guess what? My memory. I can't remember the lines. 
Yep, I believe that. So I did memorize this following quote. So oh, see gosh. if you know, I know you're not into theater right. and stuff. Hold but... back your laughter, listeners. <laughs> Stop. This is like a trial run for my next class, okay? So try to guess what this is from. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer you know what that oh my is? my God, that is terrible, dude. To be... What the hell was that? What do you mean? Just terrible. That's too easy. Shakespeare's Hamlet. Oh, right? okay. But I thought it was pretty good. To be... Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. How about this one? My mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Where's oh, that from, Elizabeth? God, I love that movie. That was Forrest Gump. You got it. That was a good accent. I know. Okay, I got another one. Um, so listen to this, but this is theater also. Okay. Yeah. Let us do something while we have the chance. Let us make the most of it before it's too late. Okay. No clue, but <laughs> it sounds like a pretty poor play. The play is waiting for Godot. Haven't you heard of that? Uh, no, not oh, at all. Oh. And it is a good reminder not to ever watch it. So, <laughs> um, Okay, last one. Welly, 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 welly. To what do I owe the extreme pleasure of this surprising visit? I have no clue. <laughs> Clockwork Orange, man. Remember Clockwork oh, Orange? Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Okay, enough of the <laughs> chit chat and back and forth. I'm going to hand it over to you, Lizzo. Okay, well, today we have Leanne Shermer. I'm psyched and, for this one. Yeah, I am too. It's it's very unique. Uh, Leanne is an American actress who does theater and voiceover. She lives in LA. She's Latina and she has a 23 year old son. She also has CMT. Also, she is an LA historian, which was a passion that she made into a career because once she had to slow down to the effects of CMT, she found this and now she loves history and she's a historian. So welcome, Leanne. Hi, it's great to be here. Thank you so much um, for allowing me to share a little and hopefully um, try and give some people some clues on how to deal with this crazy That's so, thing called so CMT. awesome. <laughs> yes, and you reached out to us to get on this podcast, which I thought was fantastic. But hold on, Elizabeth made a comment about some of your uh, prior skills and profession and doing these voice voices for various voice characters, yeah. voiceovers, mm -hmm. I guess it's what it's called. I'm learning now. So Lizzo, what's the, what's the voice you referenced that she had done? Yeah. So when I looked Leanne up, cause we always do thorough background checks. Oh yeah. We know everything <laughs> about you now, everything. <laughs> it said that she was known for the voice of Rene Montoya in the Batman animated series. So I was thinking, would you mind doing a little bit of that or just a couple of words in that voice? Okay, let me channel back when I did that. Let's see. Sweet. Holy smokes, Batman. Where's that perp? I love it. <laughs> there we go. You're you hired. got it. You nailed it. Yep. That was better yeah. than mine. That is oh, way better. So, yeah, this is awesome. I, I think just to start, right, you have uh, quite a great background in history. And uh, we were very impressed when we did the pre-interview with you and just kind of your story. And I always think it's good to start just kind of the history. Like, you know, I'm always curious, when were you diagnosed with CMT? What was life like before you had CMT? You know, what were you doing and, and we'll ask you a bunch of questions about that in terms of how you received your diagnosis, how you felt about that. But even before CMT, I guess, when were you, when did you find out you had CMT and, or when did you experience symptoms? And even prior to that, what was your life like? What were you doing? Well, um, I was diagnosed probably, uh, when I was late, mid to late forties, but I remember, um, it coming on when I was about 41. That's when I first had that little spot of, I guess, tingling or feeling strange in one of my feet. Um, and that was the beginning. <clears throat> but prior to that, uh, I guess if you said, what was my life, life before that? Yeah, it was only doing... diagnosed when you were 41. So <laughs> you had this whole, you know, whole life yeah, going I mean, on. It was, um, it was crazy. I would probably say 
I was the little dynamo. I was doing 10 things at once and I wanted to do 20. So I was mm -hmm. constantly running around out of the house. I, I disliked sort of sitting in any one place. And I guess knowing what came later, I'm really glad that I was like that. Um, I used to hike, I was into swing dancing. I loved to travel. I was just in constant motion. Um, I would try to do dance classes because I, you know, failed pretty miserably as, as a dancer, but you know, I could always get to the end and kind of pose at the last moment. But I had difficulty with that. And I just thought it was okay, I was uncoordinated. Um mm. the same thing with sports, you know, never my strong suit. If I could get out of gym class, I would. Uh, I loved swimming. That was easy, but things like other sports were always, I, I guess, difficult. So I just thought it was a klutz. Like, you know, I didn't really think about it until later after the CMT came on and I realized why dance class was so difficult sure. having to do it with balance and everything. So that was super challenging. Um, there were little things like that, that might've been hints, you know, or I would trip if I was hiking, but I used to joke about it well, I'm really flexible. I just tripped and popped back up again. So what, you know? Um, so I guess I was pretty plucky and I didn't know. So I just thought that was the way things were. Um, but as, as I could say, I was definitely one who lived, tried to live five lives in the space of a day. <laughs> so, How did um, you get into acting? Oh, that's interesting. Well, um, there were some antecedents here. My mother was an actress. She uh, was in films here and also in Mexico in the golden era, the Época de Oro in Mexico, and then in Hollywood in the early days, um, late 30s into the 40s. So it was present there. And um, my grandmother on my father's side, she was a light opera singer. So and she was American. So I guess I had performing on both sides. And I always loved theater. I always loved to perform. I loved being characters and trying to live all those lives in the space of, a, of one lifetime, I guess. So um, I got into it um, basically in college. And then after that, um, you know, I studied, I did a lot of workshop studies here. I also studied in London for a year. Um, I went to SC and did the theater there. Um, so yeah, I mean, wow. since that age, I was always involved in theater and, um, you know, which, which requires some dance, you know, like I said, I'd fake my way around that, uh, but a lot of movement. And what you take for granted is, is in, as you shape a character, they're, they're, the way they move across the stage, the way that, you know, fast, slow. I mean, there's so much body involved in creating a character. And I think that's something that, um, you know, we can get back to later, but that's something I, you know, it's, it's more challenging now. It's really yeah. more challenging not to have that freedom to be able to create through physical form, I guess. Yeah. So you bring up a good point. So when I was in New York City, which is pretty cool, I went to see Wicked. And I tell you, I was so blown away, so emotional. You can ask my wife, I cry at everything, right? So I spent most of the show crying. Just in terms of the beauty and what these actors, actresses can do. And you're right. There's all sorts of motion, right? All sorts of motion that people could take for granted, right? When it comes to dance and acting. And it was really impressive. So I can also imagine why you were very passionate about the theater, right? And it's cool that you had that opportunity and still do to do that. So it's pretty cool. You want to tell us, and Elizabeth, I, I guess I'll just run this whole podcast. You just hang out and I'll just keep asking these just, questions. Just, okay. <laughs> so excuse me, folks. This is the Chris show, not the Chris and Lizzo. Um, no. <laughs> so tell us about, you said you had, uh, you had tripped or uh, some trembling in your feet, but what, what were some of those other systems that brought symptoms that brought you to say, Hey, I wonder if I should go seek, you know, uh, uh, someone to diagnose this or tell me kind of maybe do I have something? Well, it was really strange. It was like a dime sized little uh, area on the bottom of one of my feet, probably my right foot. And I thought it was odd. <clears throat> it felt like, you know, how your feet get really cold, like if you're out somewhere yeah. snowy and you come back in and they start to thaw out. It started to feel like that. And I thought, that's weird. Haven't been in snow recently. Um, you know, I just thought, well, okay, I guess it'll go away. Maybe I, you know, got a piece of something in there or I don't know. And then it started to kind of spread. And then it started on the other foot. And I thought, you know, and I was, 
I'm your pretty, you know, stoic person. I'll be like, oh, well, it'll go away. You know, it's nothing. Or I asked a couple of people, hey, did you ever have this? Oh, I don't know. It'll probably go away. Um, but interestingly enough, prior to that, I started noticing that when I put on tennis shoes, this is weird, that I would put on a tennis shoe that was, you know, wide enough and my size, but it would feel as though my foot were, were compressed and that there wasn't enough room for, the, for my feet foot in there. I don't know. It sort of bothered me. And so I thought maybe I should get wider shoes or I didn't really know what that was about, but again, I'll just ignore it until it started happening on both feet and the area started to grow. And I thought, mm -hmm. this is hmm. okay. This is weird. So I did the usual stuff. I went to a podiatrist who was very lovely, but didn't have any ideas that there doesn't seem to be anything wrong. I really don't know. Maybe Maybe it just, you know, hurt it or something and it'll go away, you know. So that there began the trail of a hundred million people who didn't know. So I went, you know, to podiatrists and chiropractors and all kinds of people and had x-rays and MRIs and, you know, finally a bunch of neurologists until finally, and this was probably like four years later, um, suggested that it might be CMT. Four years. And then I heard diagnosis. Yeah, four that's years. like a four year yeah. quest. Right. At least, at out. least. And this was um, the first symptoms started about about a year after I had my son. And, you know, I wonder, if, uh, I don't know, you know, it, I was fine throughout pregnancy. Not a not really a problem, you know, at all. I mean, I had a really nice pregnancy. All was well. Everything was happy. Um, so, yeah, it was a long trail of people not knowing. And I got really frustrated. I think when friends, well-meaning friends, have you tried, have you gone to the neurologist? You should see a neurologist. And I'd be like, I've seen many of them. Nobody knows. And they had no answers, no idea. And, and meanwhile, this little dime sized thing was now the size of Milwaukee, you know, creeping up my feet. And I, you know, got, yeah. I felt other things, you know, like the balance and muscle weakness. And, you know, I could hardly wear any shoes anymore. I came to the certain point. So when so, they diagnosed you and they said Charcot Marie tooth, what did you think? Well, it sounded really surreal, like Charcot Marie tooth. I had these like three <laughs> bizarre characters yeah. in You're my like, head. You're like, duh, this is cool, right? Yeah, like, oh, no, I'm God. like, what is this? You know, and I imagine this, you know, creature with sort of a tooth hang. I mean, it all got very <laughs> theatrical. And I thought, jeez, right. what is this? And of course, figures, because as I began this quest to ask people what it was, I knew deep down inside that people weren't going to know what this was. And I, I knew it would be a long road till I found somebody who did know. I just knew that. And I knew it wasn't going to be an easy fix. Um, and my, you know, the greatest moment was one of the neurologists along the way was like, Oh, what was that again? He goes, yeah, I think I read a paragraph about that in medical school. Two seconds later, I looked up and he was online and I'm like, I've done that. Yeah. I've been, if he has to go online and he's a neurologist, we're in deep trouble. The awareness of this, I mean, thank God it's improving, but back in the early 2000s, I mean, nobody knew what this was. Nobody. But, it, but it's, it's still, it's still pretty common, you know, which is, Again, I think back why we're doing this podcast as well. It's just spreading awareness, whoever listens to this, because people still are challenged. They're on these quests like you were to get this diagnosis. And I was going to ask you, Lizzo, too, right? Like Johan having CMT, did he have that situation on his foot? No, that's a, so I've it's heard so, other people. Like, uh, Katarina, Katarina says something like that. She had this patch and then it kind of another woman, but it's just so different when you start having symptoms because it, mm. it affects those motor nerves and the sensory nerves. Right. So the sensory nerves were probably getting tweaked for somehow. Yeah. And interesting. It, it, but you know, as an actress, what did you think? I mean, I mean I, I'm sure you looked it up and you know, it's like, it's a progressive neuromuscular disease. And I mean, how, did, how did you deal with that? And did you think, what did you well, think? So Frankly, one, just hold one second here on the, on the podcast. I'm getting some kind of knocking or type of vibration. So just a heads up on that. I can hear it in my, so I don't know where it's coming from, but. Okay, Mark. Um, yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Basically um, how, you know, when it started to sort of sink in that this was something really bizarre and you're right, you mentioned the heightened sensitivity. I couldn't even walk barefoot. I mean, the thought, because the surfaces, 
and, and, the, and the sensation would just keep going like a piano pedal, you know, the hmm. C note just goes around forever. You know, my scariest idea was when I actually had to go barefoot in my friend's house and he had a sisal carpet. I thought I was going to die, you know, but anyway, um, yeah, what ends up happening is, you know, you're on the internet late night, which you should never do because it's really scary. And you start running this, oh my God. And when you, when you look at that, it, it is really, really frightening. And you're alone at night. I do not recommend that because everything will come up, you know, um, every dread disease in the planet. And yeah, as it, as it, you know, in the beginning, it was something I could sort of semi deal around, but it got to a point where, where that was really, really scary. And you just go, could I do that role? And I mean, I would go to every show and watch people do roles and just go, that time when she dashed across stage, that time when, you know, she had to sit on the floor. So I couldn't do that. There's two stairs without a railing. I mean, it, it, you know, it's really bad because it just races through your mind of all the things that would be scary, nerve wracking, challenging, all of which is played against the idea of anyone casting you. Because yeah, the minute right. you discuss it, they, you know, and quite rightly, they'll be like, well, this is really challenging. And oh my God, what if, you know, she, she can't deal with that. And also their, their issue is they want to keep you safe and in one piece. And so do you. Um, it's, it's very confronting when you, you, all the things you took for granted, you don't realize how physically demanding a role is, how much physical energy is required to, to do that and to work around it is a whole nother set of variables that not, you know, there comes to a point where you can't just mask it. You've got to have your team on board. So what, at what point did you say, I'm going to start talking about this as opposed to hiding it? Right. Yes. And just, and and, as an actress, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, and, and one thing I want to say before you get there that leads into that, though, is you made a comment that I wrote down during the pre-interview because you know, Liz, Lizzo and I always ask people about kind of that emotional roller coaster once you receive this diagnosis. And um, you made some reference to just very self conscious. You felt unattractive, kind of what's wrong with me, just all of these things going through your mind, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, feeling kind of alone. And so, not to bring you back to that point. Um, but I think if you can comment a little bit on that, and then it leads into Lizzo's questions, just how do you navigate through are always very interesting in, in kind of your perspective. Well, I think, you know, and, and, and I want to take this interview certainly from those low points and, and to the, to some good points, the high points and on, definitely. A, on an up tune here, but in the beginning, when it, when you start realizing what's happening to you and, and you can't wear certain shoes. And then mm. it goes to, I can't wear anything that's covered. So I have to have sandals. So when it comes to, then I can't wear any heels at all. And, you know, I was in the show and somebody said, well, here comes the costumer. And you're like, I haven't said anything. Oh no. How do I, so much energy goes into masking what is wrong mm. that it, it, it's a double, it's, it's double the work. You have to do the work. Then you've got to mask there being anything wrong, you know? So you're like, well, I can't wear those shoes. Uh, I can't wear those either. Well, what shoes can you wear? Don't you have anything else? Well, actually, no, I can only wear these because I have an issue. And, you know, these are the only shoes I can wear here. Let me show them to you, you know, which doesn't go with anything that is planned in the show. <laughs> and then you think at that point, you know, it, and, and again, you don't, you, you can't just, you know, in life also, you can't just show up at a, at a cocktail party sort of nicely dressed because that demands a certain outfit with shoes, you know? And then now that I have AFOs, it's like, all right, I, I'm very cavalier about that. Now it's like, hi, see the AFOs, here I am, deal. But um, no, you, you, can't, you, don't, you can't go to the same places looking the way you did when something, you know, it demanded a formal occasion. I'm not the most vain person around, but it, it does kind of give, a hit because you're just not as attractive. You're walking like a rhinoceros, let's face it, you know? So you yeah. can laugh your way through it, but it's, it's, it's tough. And, you know, and the masking, the masking of what's going on. And there was a show where, you know, we had the shoe discussion and I finally just said, guys, look, I have this issue and I literally can't wear anything, but what I'm showing you here. So we're going to have to work around it if you want me in the show. I mean, basically, and I got with my stage managers and with every single stage hand and I, and when they were new, because they switched out stage hands all the time, 
I take them aside and it goes, this is my issue. See the stuff backstage. I need it. I need stuff. I need tape. And I said, I'm not being a prima donna, but seriously, when the lights go out, I got to Anne Frank. What is it? Not Anne Frank. Um, Ay, por favor. Helen Keller, my way through yes, this, God right. forbid. Edit that out. <laughs> I have to like, no, seriously, because these days, but um, you know, I had to like, you know, back when I was backstage, I would take the stage hands aside and say, I'm not just saying this, but when lights go down, when the lights go off beyond just a couple of pieces of glow tape on the floor, I have to absolutely be confident that there's nothing in this pathway that gets inadvertently placed because here's my issue. And I would, I would take it, them aside myself to explain it. I would walk it before the show started. Any last minute things, please let me know. Or if I need you, can you take my hand and walk me out on stage during the act break? I mean, I said, because it's really critical. I can't just jump out of the way. I need to know because I'm walking on a memorized pattern as well. And I have to trust all of you back here, my fellow actors, that nothing has changed. And if it has I've got a hand and someone's walking me out. It's sort of like my moment of truth. I had to come clean on that show. And, uh, you know, it, it was a, a weight off me, but then I realized, you know, how much I was asking of everyone else. And so mm. it's a really fine line because it's so much easier not to have you, you know? I mean, they have to really well, like you. Leanne, yeah. the other thing is, is that there are so many actresses and actors looking for work. And that, you know, that's a hard thing. You know, do we want to work with this woman? It's going to take a lot of extra effort to, you know, make her happy, be able to walk around and do what we want. Or do we want this other person doesn't have an issue? Absolutely. And so you're walking that line. And so what ends up happening, the, the reality is, yes, they could hire 52,000 people. Everyone is absolutely recastable in this town and for who you are. So, you know, you have to come clean. I guess what I do now is I just come clean with everyone and I go, look, these are my issues. I totally get it. If that's not going to work for you, for whatever the conditions may be, absolutely get it. And you have to be willing to let it go. Hmm. I mean, bottom line, you do, because you have to be willing to say, if it doesn't work, then I have to let this one go. If so have they, people actually said that to you? Have they just said, this isn't going to work out? Not yet, but the day could happen. You know, the day could happen. Um, you know, now it's like from this point going forward, I go to auditions and I go, hi, this is my issue. You're going to yeah. look at it like a regular disability, I guess, which people are so great about disability and actors mm -hmm. now. It's like, they're amazing with that. But, you know, this is the nature of it. It's not going to look like I need this, but I need this. As you see me walk, it's going to look like that. Yes. But you got to realize that there are other conditions that the way I'm able to portray this character has to be filtered through my physical issue. Right. So I'm going to have to, I will work with you absolutely to absorb this into that, you know, yeah. but there are physical conditions that, you know, if you're touring a show and you go to a space where the stage is five times bigger than what you normally perform on, that's an issue. You're like, okay, right. guys, what are we... So in a way, you've got to have the team on board and you're going to meet them creatively and work ethic wise as best you can. But everybody needs to really understand what your parameters are because they won't be visible to people sometimes. Right, right. You know, And that that little shoe that somebody kicked off as they were coming across the stage, that's something that, you know, you do your due diligence as an actor. I'm constantly doing that backstage, but you still need to have a team on board that says, Guys, if we fling a shoe off, please pick it up. You know, it, it, it requires everything. And, and I realize that if that's not something people can do, I will always give them the option and, and you know, be willing to walk away. I, I, what can you do? Right. So yeah, and I other, guess. Um, go ahead, go ahead. And no, I guess, I'm, 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 I'm just kidding. I guess having the support, right, in terms of auditioning, it sounds like people are very open and you're open. But, um, through kind of since the forties in your diagnosis, what support, like what's kind of like your support group? Is it, is it friends? Is it, I mean, you know, what's, what's also helped you get through this, right? Well, um, shout and out I shouldn't say get through this cause it's there, but get through these various stages, right? What's your support functions? Um, my, my, uh, group of friends and family, uh, my son is amazing. He is amazing. Cool. And I just, you know, my lament to him is that I wasn't 
that super mobile hiking mom that I wanted to share all of that stuff with him. And I couldn't do it. And it was like, you know, and I, I really, I'm so sorry that he couldn't experience who I was then, you know, it's all hearsay, you know, but there's photo evidence. So what can I say? Um, and, and some of the things that I love, like the dancing and, and, you know, all the hiking and traveling and moving around and stuff. Um, but he's been amazing. And now he understands why I say I need to leave, you know, for the airport really early because I can't just, okay, the gate has changed. Let's yeah. jam. You know? right, so right. he's amazing. He's <clears throat> amazing with that. Now he really understands it. And he understands my pathways through the house thing, which means nothing gets left on the floor at night. If you have to, you know, he's just fantastic with that. Um, that's cool. You know, so I have to say, but my, um, so is my extended family and my son's father is amazing too. He's really, really helped. Um, he has totally been understanding whenever we, you know, go to events or, or do stuff together. He's, he really gets it. And he, he makes jokes along with me and we're all, but he's, he's really, really there. My friend, uh, friend family is beyond absolutely beyond because I have to tell you as a group, they now, because like I said, I walk like a rhinoceros. I can't mask it anymore. Um, they are amazing. They'll go walking with me. And that means you have to walk at, a, at the base of a snail. Right. So it's a good time for conversation. Um, they help me do stuff. No, I mean, you know, things from carrying the groceries to the, to the, you know, carrying the suitcases down the stairs. I mean, it's, they're amazing. You all know who you are. Um, there's a lot to mention. So I'll just, you know who you are guys. And I'm eternally, eternally grateful because I have to ask so much of you. And that goes against the, we ought to be able to just do it ourselves mentality right. and, you know, pick up the pieces and don't ask for help. And it's like, I guess I have to ask for help. It's just, or I could do it myself. It's just going to take way longer. So when you're with other people, you know, everybody jumps in and, and, and they've been amazing. They've really been amazing because there's, there's a lot of, a lot of, um, I don't want to ask for help. I can't be bothering people. I'm such a burden. Oh, go on without me. All of that runs through your head, of course, you know, but, um, they are amazing. So without them, I, I don't know what I do. It would, I just be batting about by myself. Um, you know, and, and you're trying to do the things you always did, right? you know, but it, it helps to get a walk to the car. It really helps to have someone help you down the long stairway and, mm -hmm. you know, cause there's all those issues and Leanne, um, did you have, was it a process for you to open up about it or you found out about CMT and you were just telling everybody I have CMT and this is what I'm going through because a lot of people, you're very open, you're very open with your friends and it looks like that's working really well. And I encourage people to be open about their CMT and, but people struggle with these ideals of like, I shouldn't ask for help. And I, I don't want to go up because there's, you know, I, there's no railing there. And should I say something? Should I not? How did you deal with all these obstacles? Well, it's taken me years to get to the point where I'll just turn to a stranger and go, can I take your hand while I go mm -hmm. up this curve? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just do so that. So you're now. grabbing but, strangers at the curve? Sure. If I want to, if I have to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Because, um, you know, and, and I've always been kind of outgoing. So I have trouble talking to people. That's easy. But for <laughs> you, you know, right. I didn't tell people what it was. I didn't draw any attention to it because you don't want to be seen as the walking condition, you know? And I was like, the more I define that in my life, the more I become an invalid. Oh my God. You know? And like I said, the fear is always behind it because the fear is what the fear is, you know? And if I don't think about that today and I think of all the things I can do and I, I don't, you know, like walking sign of someone impaired, you know, I, there's all of that running through your head because it's so easy, like you say, to not be cast. It's so easy to, okay, well, we'll go without her. Well, you know, it's gonna work and it will be problematic. Well, we'll just go on to that and then we'll do something else with her. You know, it, it, you're so aware of being seen as an impediment that I think for years, I just, I masked it. I masked it as best as I could. I never talked about it, I, you know, to the general public. Um, I tried to make it as much of a non-issue as possible until it kind of got really hard to do that. Yeah. And now it's just, okay, guys, I'm going to your house and you have those three really long stairs, you know, the really easy ones with no railing. Yeah, great. And I call you before I come over, you know, because- People don't know. They're not aware. It's stuff they've never been aware. Yeah. How would they know? 
Right. But now I just enlist the help. I advertise it. I'm like, because it's those three stairs are really hard. It's like a yeah. deal breaker. So, right. so you're thinking of all these things you never had to think yeah. about before, right? In just day to day life. And, um, you know, I was just coming across something in my notes here too, is kind of the turnaround from being diagnosed, the emotional aspect, accepting it, talking about it. But you said something like you said, I am going to have fun. Like I'm going to have fun. And that was really important to you. And you kind of, you told Lizzo that, and I, during the pre-interview, you kind of set your mind, like every day I'm going to have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you have to, like I said, because <clears throat> the dark side, the fear <clears throat> of what might happen to you, 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 you just can't live that because you can't. Um, and so it was like, well, what can I do? And I joke about this, but oh my gosh, I had no patience. I was the person with no, you know, for general things in life. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I'm so impatient. Just like and Lizzo. Just like, and no, serious, I am. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's I know, go. totally. You can't just like, that and yeah. you're just like, hey, will you chill? But you, right. know, you can't. And so I understood now this thing called patience, that it may take a long time for something to happen. You may write a paragraph a day and it'll eventually add up. I've learned a lot about patience and what you can do to fill those moments. So yay. Okay. That's the life lesson. You know, okay. I got it. Now can <laughs> this be over please? You know? Yeah. But um, yeah, but the, the commitment was, okay. The only way you can keep getting up is if you put your mind on the next cool thing, the next cool thing can be that little cup of coffee in the coffee bar and reading a chapter of a book you like, because mm -hmm. you've got to take down this ongoing monologue in your mind, which accompanies you every minute of every day. And I, I, I laugh about it. It's very theatrical. You guys, theater people will get this, but you're stage managing your life. Cue number oh, zero five, um, stand up. Cue number zero six, reach for shoes. Cue number zero seven, <laughs> you know, put socks on. You know, every step, no joke, of every moment and procedure in every day has a direction attached mm -hmm. to it. So it's meant your day is mentally exhausting. So sometimes, and a lot of times you need moments, you need downtime from this ongoing exhausting dialogue. Other people, <laughs> you know, you spring to your feet and you just grab something and put it in the shelf. No, 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 no. Stand up, open the door, reach for it. It's exhausting. So you need to come down from that. And those are what I call me moments. Okay. And the me moments happen throughout the day and they're you know, sitting in that coffee bar, maybe that little stroll around the block at the pace of a snail. Maybe it's just put your feet up and lay down for a second and listen to a podcast. I mean, it's anything that takes that inner dialogue down because behind the inner dialogue is, oh, what if I'm not able to do this? Right. You know, it, it can go south. So you got to take that thing down and you've got to put your mind on what's the next cool thing today. That could be, I'm seeing my best friend in an hour and we're going to have a wonderful time. I'm going to a lecture tonight. I'm going to rehearsal. I get to watch this movie tonight. You know, there yeah. are so many great. Yeah, it's um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and just for clarification to our listeners, when you said lay down and listen to a podcast, I'm sure you meant to say, listen to the CMT for me podcast. Absolutely. Thank so I look you. at each other and like, like, where's she coming from? <laughs> like, why is she plugging the podcast? Yeah, no, I mean, seriously, <laughs> right. because I found this podcast and I was like, yes, you need to, if you could just, you know, every time I talk to somebody that knows what this is about, um, it, you know, it really, if, if you can look at it in the positive, you would have to say, okay, this is what it feels like. What can we do to make today? Okay. I mean, I take pictures of LA. I do all this LA history stuff, right. Which I love. So maybe it's just drive around a little bit and take some pictures. Yeah. Anything that makes you turn out and say, Hey, this is cool. That's beautiful. This friend was so much fun. People just, you know, they, they look at that as being frivolous. You know, you're not doing something. You need to be working. You know, you should be looking for more work to me. You, know? right. like you don't understand what pressure is going on in the head of your friend with CMT. Yeah. And you I guess what I, yeah. And I guess what I want to say, I want to say this correctly, but this isn't to say that having CMT is like a welcome thing and people should be excited about it. But listening to you talk, 
it probably has forced you also to reflect on a lot of different things that you normally wouldn't have. Like you just said, what are the joys that I can experience? Things I used to take for granted, now you don't take for granted anymore. And it just sounds like you've done a really nice, nice job with that. Practice patience, slow down. And a lot of things you probably would have never thought of if you didn't have CMT. You know, it's true. I mean, I was always, um, I think, empathetic towards people with you know, physical impairments because my mother had uh, what we probably was CMT, but they never told her that they told her it was arthritis and a bunch of other things, but she had physical and mobility issues for a long time. And I was always really sympathetic to that. So I would get it. You know, it's, I understand that physical mobility thing, you know, historically. And then of course, when it happened to me, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm no Florence Nightingale, you know, please, I'm just a person here, but I'm saying, you know, I have a lot of sensitivity now in that area and a lot, a lot of patients. And, you know, some days your house doesn't get dusted. It just doesn't because that could be overload that day, you know, because that just, just doing laundry is, is a series of steps and maneuvers and issues. And, you know, so slow down, don't ask so much of yourself every day, do one thing. And sometimes those things with super important, I think I'm going to throw out there is that, Um, you know, it's not just physical things. Sometimes something that is in the realm of the mental, say a letter you have to write or a business phone call or something that's going to require thought and sort of, you know, a lot of energy or whatnot. It may be too much for today. Yes. Don't do it today Yeah. because you never know when that overload moment happens. And 150% of you is required for every physical task you do. You can't just run around and do that stuff without yeah. thinking about it. So it's like, and you know, have you met other people with CMT and how did that go? Well, um, yes, I have, uh, I have a, a friend of a friend who's a new friend of mine. Um, her son a has CMT. of a friend who's a new friend. Got it. That's cool. Yeah, and she just got diagnosed. I mean, her son has oh, it, wow. but she didn't imagine that she had it until she started. And I think she's about like 40 also ish but she started getting symptoms. And so, you know, now I, I know her and I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, I can help with this. Um, it's awesome. You know, because at least you can, you can try and impart something or at least yeah. some understanding or even explain to the friend that we um, both met through this, this mutual friend. Right. You know, I'm like, yes, this is what's going on with her. I totally get it. Okay. Here's, here's a great way you can support that or, you know, and, and, um, but very few uh, people that I've met online through the local support group, but other than that, you know, it's not randomly that you go out in the world and go CMT. Yeah, me too. Like it's not a big number thing. It's not the Jerry Lewis telethon. You know, there's not a lot of awareness for this and what it looks like if you're sitting down unless people see you walking is it's, Oh, it's in your head. It's like fibromyalgia or, you know, whatever. And you're like, well, no, it's not really in your head. And if I could find a way out of this, I would go there immediately. You yeah. know, I, you know, nobody wants to have this and I'm sure someday yep. it will be cured. And we're all hoping for that day, you know, right. um, because Do you it, worry it is, that your son has it. Um, well, I, you know, there's a, there's a big chance that he doesn't, there's a small chance that he does. And I, I uh, content myself with we're we're on the way through so I guess stage three clinical trials in about three mm-hmm. different places that I know of that are really working on this. There's other things we can look at. Um, there's some genetic stuff that say that won't wouldn't let it be expressed. You know, maybe there's nutrition. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's new stuff happening all the time with a greater and greater speed. Right. So I'm you know thinking hopefully isn't you know if he should well the consolation prize is we're moving really really quickly and the more awareness i just pray for you know more awareness um research research and so people important. you know that it doesn't become a, condi- a condition where people dump you know let's research this for the next 50 years like no no get on it this is a priority folks neuro stuff muscular stuff like it it really changes who you are, the quality of your life, who you've been gets completely derailed in another direction. And you're kind of 
in the beginning, really alone in a dark room trying to figure yeah. out how not to tell everyone and how to cope with it. it it's it's right. And I mess. think your reference to being alone. So Lizzo, right. And I, again, I think about it, Leanne, it's so great that you uh, have met someone with CMT and you guys mm -hmm. are talking and your friends. Right. And I find that that's so important. Right. And so Lizzo, can't people through the CMTA, right. What can people do to meet other folks with CMT, right. Can they go to these branches and um, you know, what, yes. are, what are the resources the CMTA offers for folks? So I think Leanne has been to, uh, we have an LA branch yeah, awesome. thriving, but you know, COVID put a damper on a lot of that it did. for a couple yeah. of years. And now, so for a couple, you know, they started doing Zoom meetings, but it's not quite the same. Mm -hmm. And there were fewer meetings. So that was really tough for people with CMT and other conditions. But I think all that is starting again and more and more people are going out and hopefully other variants won't be causing major issues. So people can go out and meet other people, right? Well, you know, I, I do have a wonderful friend who, who doesn't have CMT, but she has, um, uh, I, I don't know what they call it. It's kind of complicated, but a lot of the issues are similar. Mm -hmm. And she's a, a little bit older than me. She's a wonderful, wonderful friend. Uh, she was an actress and a flamenco dancer and amazing at both things until um, she got this much later in life. But she's, you know, one of the few people who, because she physically had it, knew what was actually going on. I won't say, you know, your friends are as understanding as they can be without, without feeling that. She actually said, I know what you're talking about. Right. And she said, yeah, I'm so much, I, I'm older than you. It's really, you know, a lousy deal. But um, I think of her all the time because a dancer. And so, you know, people will say, oh, well, you know, you should exercise. And I'm like, look, people, this happens to you. I was a hiker, whatever. She was a flamenco dancer. It has nothing to do with how fit or mobile or healthy you were. It just sort of shows up one day and things are never the same after. Hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and, but, but she was, she inspired me a lot. And she, um, she was, oh, again, what was so cool about her was I'd go visit her and she's so funny. We would start talking and then she would say, well, here I am hobbling to the front door. And I'd be like, yeah, we'd be cracking jokes, you know, because. So you use humor. Yeah, yeah. you have to. No, yeah, why not? It's, it's so scary. You know, it, it's if you gave into how deeply frightening this is. And sometimes you think what happens to me when, you know, I need help and I'm 70, you know, or I mean, what happens to me? Ah. You know, and you can't go there. Like you've got to just keep laughing. You've just got to keep seeing the beauty in the world. And so the time that you spend doing that, it may not be forwarding, you know, your work or, you know, getting more money or I, I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, you Enjoying just need life. to keep your head in some positive place for a great part of the day and concentrate on the people you love and the things you love because the rest of it will take you down in a nanosecond. Yep. So, so Leanne, what- Wait, I have a oh, question. No. Really, oh, okay. I need to ask oh, this. It's not in the script, it's not in the script. I have a question. <sighs> Is there one product you can think of that you hate because you can't open it and it's hard to get to? Like, for example, like Sudafed. I can't get Sudafed. So what, what is your thing? It's a good question. Okay, my thing is cans because recently I have a cans. little bit of issue with my hands. Can't those little cans with a yeah. pop top like you just you ju anything that starts with you just <laughs> or it's yeah only that's a problem dot dot right. dot <clears throat> well, all you need to do is and I'm like you don't get it right no 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 because that little tab thing with the tuna can you know you're, you're yeah. like, oh my god you flick it up and you're trying to pull it up and you're like I can't and it seems as though packaging has gotten worse, worse. it's like it is absolutely built for, you know, you need, you know, some huge like bodyguard to open your tuna can. You know? Right. So right. I joke Did it ever that like thing. flip off in your hand, that little ring too. And then yes. you're like, ah, how do I do this? Right. Everything from, from the little bags of spinach that you can't, it just tear it open. Just, <laughs> no, I can't like, I mean, seriously, if there's anyone out there, I totally want to do the comedy video where I'll like you're, Yes, you're faced with like the tuna can or worse, the cobblestone streets. I sometimes I look oh at travel brochures and I go, you're, ha! Yeah, you know? you're giving me, you're actually giving me a really good idea. Uh, and I think that would be 
a great video or piece to do that we could do. And with your background and experience, just do a comedy video on the day-to-day challenges, right? You know, you're walking into the kitchen. Oh, okay. I'm hungry. Oh my God. How do I open this thing? And I'm just going to put on my socks. How do I do that? How do I crack an egg open? Uh, You know, yeah. I mean, I have to say that, that all these challenges, like you say, what do you, you know, you're constantly pivoting to try and find the thing you can do, you know? So, so the crazily enough, well, I mean, I direct also, but, um, I just directed, um, uh, small uh opera project for portland opera that went oh you know, cool touring around but anyway let, the point to this is that the people were fantastic the team the actors everybody the, the musical director the stage manager were amazing i kind of came clean with them when once i got up there and I, you know not that you need that much for directing but i love to be up with my actors i love to be moving with them and and demonstrating things you know physical stuff it got to a point and i reached out and i just said I need some help because there's like a really small little dance move here that I can't do, <laughs> you know? So we had a, they, the um, production team and one of my wonderful performers worked with me and, and was able to, she had some dance backgrounds so and she was able to demonstrate. It was, it was amazing. So I felt really supported in that. And it was some way I could still keep a hand in, you know, you're always looking for that way you can stay connected to something that you love to do, you know? And it's like, but yeah, I mean, the simplest little things, you know, like, oh, there's a, there's a ramp here to the entrance. It's like, uh oh, no, <laughs> I need to have my chair over here, you know, and no, I can't just move that block and no, I can't, you know. So yeah, you, you, you rely more and more on people. And I yeah. think that's very humbling, you know, yeah. to, to sort of say, this is what I need. Cause where I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and give you the best of me but I'm going to need something on the way. You, you know? know what I think is cool too, is that, um, you know, you're still engaged in theater, right? Earlier days, you're taking on these roles, you're running around the stage, right? But CMT doesn't have to be all that bad. You're still in an area that you're very passionate about. And now you're kind of directing, or maybe you're sitting down directing, but you're still <laughs> actively engaged, right? Right. And it's right. not like give up on that passion. And that, I think that's pretty, uh, that's some great advice. That's cool. Yeah. Do what, do what you can or find some, I mean, I used to swing dance. I used to love swing dancing and I still love the music. So I actually took uh, my son and a friend of ours swing dancing and they had one of the free lessons. So they took the free lessons and I watched, I loved even just being there and watching yeah. And then I got up and my, and my son, it was a slower one. And I said, okay, I'm going to do this really slow, probably like half time. He's a musician. Yeah. So we're good. <laughs> like, can right. we half time this? Because, and it was so fun just being up there and just moving the way that I could accommodate. It was like, wow. So it's like, you know, you, you, yeah. you need, you need a, a, a world of people around you to, help you be your best self. And in turn, you know, you got to be fun. You got to be fun to hang out with, you know, <laughs> Yeah. try not to be a downer. Um, you know, try yeah, to who's going to want to hang out with you, right? To the room, but, but it's, <laughs> it's not the same old you that they knew for 40 years, you know, right. so they're learning to adjust. Everybody has to take a step to the left, you know, <laughs> yep. I don't know. It's, so um, it's Lizzo, crazy. I'm, I'm looking at kind of the timing of our podcast and, um, Leanne, we could go on and on, um, but we'll take a little bit more time and we usually close this out and I'm going to let Lizzo kind of ask the question. Right? So, yeah. And I think you've given a lot of advice, you but if have, there's one awesome. piece of advice that you would like to share with the community about living with CMT, what would that be? Really be easy on yourself because this is a mental, a mental, uh, uh, challenge. Sometimes I think more than the physical, the mental challenge is no, you're not going to look like you did. You're not going to show up in the cocktail dress. You're not going to walk like, you know, some sort of whatever, whatever that's going on with you're also aging. You know, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, and just, just, um, you know, so, so I think approaching and understanding that the one thing you do still have control over is your head. So you got to do everything you need to put your head in the best place. And if that means, you know, the floor stays unswept for a day, so be it. If that means that you need a moment in a coffee bar, that's a moment you need, you know, 
you, you've got to take care of yourself because all those wonderful positive rest moments allow you to then go, okay, well, tomorrow I'm going to face this task or tomorrow I'll do this other thing. And, you know, and then see what you can do and be a little proactive, try and smooth the way before you get there, you know, like, yeah, don't get at that horrible moment at the airport, you know, just go, I need to be dropped off three hours before. Right. <laughs> take right. a book you know so but but take care of your mind and, and put people around you who who think you're cool who want to hang out with you you know take care of your mind because the physical is 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 the second piece that comes along because you That's will true. take yourself yeah. down a, a bad rabbit hole faster than anything very so, insightful it's very yeah. insightful yeah. thank you thanks thank yeah you. thank you very much and, and i'll just add you know things that you've referenced for our audience right you know, keep laughing, right? I think you said, Leanne, see beauty in the world, you know, practice patience and stay in that positive place. And, uh, you know, so great, such great feedback for our listeners. Um, thank you so much for joining us on thank this you. podcast. I can't believe like an hour has gone by to tell you the truth. And um, I'd love to see something that you're either producing or directing or, It'd be cool. So you have to keep us posted on that. And um, the other thing I love about these podcasts now, you know, I was looking at everyone we interview is uh, they're great friends of ours now. So, you know, it's just helping us expand our uh, community of those with CMT. So Lizzo, let me transition here and closing. If someone wants to learn more about CMT and or to donate to our cause, where should they go? Well, they go to CMTA usa.org there is so much information on this website and so many resources and go that's cool it. so go to the site save this as a bookmark ongoing information is posted it is a major major research excuse me major major resource of information so mark take research out please so you know folks it does take a lot of money to fund research in order to find a cure for cmt if someone was so inclined to generously donate to our cause, please go to cmtausa.org. And to our listeners, do you have a good story? Would you like to tell your story on CMT for Me podcast? If so, write to us, info at cmtausa.org. Pitch your idea. We do want to hear from you. Cool. So, oh, oh, good. I'm glad you didn't say, okay, goodbye, because I have something to oh say before we go. Yeah. Oh. Before, I, I just need to sing a little song that I've been learning. And this is from my acting class. So just, just tell me. Plug your ears, folks. Oh, oh, you almost ruined it. Okay. <laughs> There's no business like show business, like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything the traffic will allow. How about that? That's fantastic. Whoa. That is so oh fantastic. Oh my goodness. And I, I will jump it. right in. Until next time, folks. Talk to you I later. I just thought maybe Leanne would like to hire me. Talk to you later. <laughs> Goodbye. Adios, everybody. Until Bye. next time. Later. Later, Leanne.